my time right now is 8 a.m. So it will be good morning, good, morning. Or good afternoon, or good um, evening for some of you. Welcome all to this Friday cultural quiz. Uh, I'm more excited about it. Uh, we today are traveling to one country that is unique, and uh, we are traveling to two specific cities. One of them is Salvador Bahia and Sao Paulo. Okay, so before we start, I would like actually to present a very quick clip from one of our explorers here. Her name is Sean Marie. Sean Marie is doing a road trip from Tennessee to California. If you go straight from Tennessee to California, it will be 32 hours. Of course, she's not doing that. She's stopping on the way and uh, she wants us to see what she's doing. So I will present pretty quick a clip of one of the parks that she uh, stopped uh, for you not to see it. Oh, let me just a second here to share my screen. So I'll play the clip now. That's nice, that's nice. So please, if you are doing a road trip, please send us uh, some of, of the videos or pictures and we can share with all of us. It will be wonderful not to, to be part of your experience as well. So please no, contact us and uh, we'll be more than happy not to have that uh, to share with everyone, okay? So well, um, I would like, we got, I, I see new faces here. So I would like for you to present yourself pretty quick there's basically three things, uh, your name, where you're from, and what do you like when you travel, right? So let's start here. I see Sylvia. Sylvia, can you help us with that? Hi, Sylvia. Hi. You need to mute yourself, all right. Indonesia. Hi, uh, I would like to uh, introduce myself. My name is Sylvia. I'm from Indonesia. Uh, okay, what the thing I like, when I travel to drive motorbike and go to the traditional market. That's all. Good idea. Wonderful. Welcome. Wonderful. <laughs> Welcome, Silvio. Welcome so much. Thank you so much. Um, well, I see, oh, Pravin. Pravin, can you, can you hear us? Hi, Pravin. Are you there? Yeah, I'm there. I'm there. Yeah, can you introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, I'm from Bangalore in India, down south. <laughs> what else do you want to know? <laughs> what, okay, what do you uh, like when you travel? Oh, when I travel? Uh, I, like, uh, I like the outdoors, yes. I really love the outdoors. I like nature. And so today's topic is going to be interesting. Looking forward to uh, you know, knowing new things of different parts of the world. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, sure. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mindy. <laughs> <laughs> right, I see two uh Jingqi. Is that correct? The how you pronounce it? Jingchu. <laughs> Jingchu. Yeah. Jingchu. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Jingchu. All right. Jingchu, can you introduce yourself? Uh can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Um Hello, my name is Incho. Um, I live in London now, uh, originally from Shanghai, China. Uh, my favorite activity when I travel is food. food. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about food, especially street food. That's my favorite. Especially street food. Wonderful, Incho. So today, that's what we're going to be doing. 
right? So a, I'm more than happy to present to you this a new, um, it's a cultural quiz of today of Brazil. A, and I was talking to Sayuri and it's so interesting about Bahia El Salvador, a, the background of it, okay? So let's now transport to Brazil, and I want for you to take a deep breath. <sighs> what do you smell? Is it meditation, of course? Well, no, I smell palm oil. <laughs> That's what I smell. From here, I can smell palm oil. You see, Sayuri is smiling. <laughs> and why is that? Well, because we're going right, right now, we're going to what it was, the jewel of Portugal for over 250 years. And in the time, <laughs> it was the center of the world production of sugar. And from the 1600 to the late 1800 was a place where most of the Africans, they were brought to Brazil. And the reason why today, there are El Salvador, it's a, the background of it, it's so African, but no more. I am just telling you brief things. So let's introduce now to Sayuri. And Sayuri, you're more than welcome. You're all yours. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you, bon dia, bon dia. Thank you, Guiliano, also to help me. Uh, I'm uh, half Brazilian and half Japanese, and my Japanese family is all in Sao Paulo. So it's a great honor to have Guiliano here helping me because it's like part of my heart in Sao Paulo. And my mom is here. Uh, she won't talk, she's very shy, but I can tell her that her favorite thing when she travels is to have her daughter driving. <laughs> so that's extremely happy for her to do like road trips with me. So I'm going to start sharing. Um, I'm Brazilian. I was born in Bahia. Uh, and my idea is to travel with you uh, to tell you a little bit of my background of my city with the food. Okay. I'm not showing not even 10% what you can do here. I'm sure Guilherme also in Sao Paulo is not showing to you not even 10% what you can do in Sao Paulo, but just to give you like a flavor, you know, like that's the idea, to give you like a little flavor of Brazil, okay? So um, we are going, I plan to do um, Q&A at the end, uh, but please, uh, when you have questions, just write in the chat, and at the end, we are going to read everything and reply, okay? So please use the chat as much as you can. Uh, it's, I won't read as I'm presenting, but I promise that at the end, we are going to have at least five minutes, 10 minutes to talk and chat about that because I know there will be lots of questions about Bahia and about Brazil, okay? So let's start with the sharing here. So uh, the song that uh, Mindy was playing, it's called Na Baixa dos Sapateiros. It's written by Ari Barroso. And I would just like to introduce you a little bit to my hometown. Those are some pictures of Salvador. Salvador, it is a city by the ocean, by the Atlantic Ocean, by the bay. We are very colorful. On the left, these guys playing the drums, they are very, very famous. It's a percussion group called Olodum. Michael Jackson was here in the 1960s playing with them. And Brazil has a famous for the music. And Salvador is a creative music for UNESCO. Okay, so if you like music, if you like flavors, you have to come here. First quiz of the day, okay? Let's choose the colors, you know, because we're very colorful. So it doesn't really match with the city to have A, B, and C. So let's write blue, red, and green in your chat. Okay, so which affirmative is not correct when we talk about Salvador Bahia? We think about colonial times. Salvador was planned to be a wall city. Was it the capital of Brazil from 1549 until 1763? Or number three, the first governor was a Portuguese name, Diogo Caramuru, that was married with the Tupinamba Catarina Paraguaçu, a native indigenous. So which one? Blue, red, or green? It's the false, it's not correct, okay? What people are Please write, write in the chat. Um, what, what are the yeah, answers? Yeah, write in the chat. Write blue, right. red, or green. Blue. We got two blues. We got one red. We got two reds now. It's a tie. Let's see. They're not yeah. correct. 
We got two greens. Blue, we got blue. Let's see who else. Okay, congratulations who said green. Okay. Right, so Sylvia uh, is good. <laughs> yeah, Diogo Caramuru. Well. Yeah, Diogo Caramuru and Catarina Paragosu, they were a real couple. Actually, they were uh, well known as being the first Brazilian family. They were like from my hometown. Actually, they got married in Paris in Saint Malo in the 16th century, but he was not our first governor. Our first governor was Pedro Souza. And yes, Salvador was a wall city. Look at this picture, okay? Salvador was a wall city. And look at the indigenous, okay? They are like doing a barbecue. And there is something very curious about the indigenous in Brazil. Some of them were cannibals. Some of them practiced what we call anthropophagia and they would eat litter. So right here in this room, I think they would eat Jose, okay? Because Jose is the powerful man here. He's our host. So <laughs> we believe it is. If you eat the flesh of a leader, if you eat the flesh of someone very important, you absorb that energy. So guess who has they eaten that was very powerful in Brazil at that time in 1556? They had as a meal, we're talking about food, right? They had as a meal our first bishop. Don Fernando oh. Sardin, the first bishop of Catholic Church, was eaten by indigenous in 1556. Delicious. They because <laughs> wow. he had an accident he had an accident in the boat and uh, imagine the Tupinambas looking at the boat, the people on the boat who would be the leader, who would look like the leader, of course the bishop okay? Very good. They, were, they did they eaten that, I'm not sure what happened with them after that, if they really got the power of the bishop, but that's what happened okay so, that's Jose, why Jose is the leader is. today so I'm, I'm <laughs> Jose is going to be eaten today Jose is going to be eaten today Jose, so let's it's, stop. Very, it's just to show you respect, okay? We are going to eat. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go back 500 years ago, okay? Let's just go back to history. I'm going to tell you the history that was um, made by the Europeans, okay? I cannot tell you the real history by the indigenous because, you know, our, written, our history is written by Europeans, Okay. So when the Europeans arrived here in the 1500, the Portuguese arrived here, we have this line here that is called Tratado de Tordesillas. So actually the size of Brazil was just this part here. Can you see? This here, okay. I show you here, that's the indigenous coming, okay. That's the, uh, the indigenous, sorry, the Portuguese coming in the 1500. And that's Brazil. Okay, the famous and very, very powerful land of Brazil at that time, today, the very heart of Brazil, the very powerful part of Brazil is the stuff where Guilherme lives, okay? Basically, 10% of the population of Brazil lives in Sao Paulo. But so after he moved there or before he moved there? <laughs> Sorry? After he moved there or before he moved there? Because Actually, of I think after. <laughs> Everyone was so fascinated with Guilherme Wise that started to move to Sao Paulo. <laughs> right answer. <laughs> but, so, but we had before Bahia and Pernambuco as the heart of Brazil. Okay? In the 16th century, 17th century, until the beginning of 18th century, Bahia was the very, very powerful land. Okay? We are going to see why. And then we have here on the right the, the, the picture of the bay. Okay? Bahia means bay. So the bay that we have by Bahia okay, by the, my city. It is the biggest bay in Brazil, the second biggest bay in the world, and it was very important for sugarcane plantations, okay, because the transportation was very important was by the ocean, so a bay was very important, okay. So let's now talk about this man here, okay. Can you guess what's his profession or you know, maybe his girlfriend, his wife, protective pro professions. Can you guess? Mathematics. He, yeah. Mathematics. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. He works well, well. with. Us. He was very important in Bahia. He was. I could call him maybe an ambassador for Bahia because he has spread the word about Bahia around the world. Okay, are you? Get another picture, and then you're going to know what his profession. This picture is easier. Writer. Writer. His name is Jorge Amado. 
I like this picture a lot because it shows daily life. I like very, very authentic pictures. You know, I don't like strike a pose picture. I like pictures the one you're just like doing your daily life. He's a writer and she's a writer. His wife's name is Zele Gatay. He is George Amado. He's a very, very famous Brazilian writer. We are going to see a little bit of his house. And guess what? She started writing when she was 60 years old. But she reviewed all the work of George Amado. And I think this picture shows a lot the complicity of the couple. And I wish one day I will find a partner like them, you know, that you share life and you share love and you share complicity too. So two writers, okay? We're talking about two writers here. If you want me to suggest you a book of George Amado, I would suggest this book on the right. It's called Bahia de Todos os Santos. It's a guided book of Bahia. So he writes about food, he writes about traditions, he writes about the streets. So put this in your list of books you have about Bahia. Before coming here, please read the book. It's a very easy book. George Amado was translated into more than 50 languages. So you're going to find in your local language, if not in English, in Spanish, in German, like in French, okay? Um, and everyone here speaks English, so English for sure. On the left, it's a book written by his daughter, okay, A Comida de Jorge Amado, that it's very important in his food. Okay? Judy, Sorry? I, was reading some, I was reading something about Jorge Amado and uh, how they translate it to other languages. It was too hard to translate the words of yeah. him to another <laughs> language to try to yeah. reflect what he was trying yeah. to display. So yeah. that, that's one thing that I was actually, you know, seeing. <laughs> yeah, so I highly suggest that you read this guided book before, then you come to Bahia, you're going to understand a little bit us, and then you can read the book of George Amado, like a novel, a proper novel. He writes lots about our local way of living. So if you're not used to that, you might not understand even when it's translated. So we're talking about food. Let's visit a little bit the kitchen of George Amado. This is the kitchen of his real house that became a museum. And food was so important in his book that guess what? They made a kitchen, uh, like a scenographic kitchen in his museum to show you a little bit of flavors. All this food that you can see here was in George Amado books, okay? So I like this sentence about George Amado that says, I didn't write my first book thinking to become famous. I wrote for the necessity or the need to express what I felt. That's why translating George Amado is so difficult because he actually put lots of his feeling in his books. Okay, so let's do another quiz. A, B, C, or D, okay? Also the wrong answer, okay? Is it A? Those are two novels, okay? Gabriela Cravi Canel and Dona Flores Sousa's Marido both preserve Amado political attitude in their satire. Gabriela in the Gabriela Cravi Canela was a cook, and Dona Flor in Dona Flores Sousa's Marido, she was a cooking teacher. And in both books, there are recipes, including Buqueca de Siri Molly, mm, yummy, that Dona Flor husband Vadinho loved it. Jorge Amado was a very conservative writer and supported the agribusiness in Brazil, especially in his first novels, Cacao. Or, George Amado was a typical Bayano that was sensual and romantic and, and filled his book with lots of mendes of Bahia and other regions like in the Northeast, like Acarajé, Carnice, Cafarinha, Moqueca. So which one, A, B, C, or D? Let's see, please type it down. We got an A, we got a D. Julian say, I hope it's C. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we got the three Bs now. Three Ds? Bs. The wrong answer. It's the wrong answer. Rupa says A, C, and D. <laughs> uh, why not? <laughs> it's, actually, uh, it's actually C. That nice and lovely couple that I show you in the first picture, you would never imagine, but he was a communist. He was from the Communist Party. And she was an anarchist. So can you imagine a couple in the 1940s, 1930s in Brazil? Just like between the wars. In 1940s, we have military government in Brazil. Can you imagine a couple with an anarchist, Italian anarchist like Giuliano, and a communist together writing books about Brazil? So it's a very powerful literature. Okay, so he was not even close to be conservative. Actually, one of the... Um, um, 
words that George Ahmad said that there is something very unique about his writing. He never gave up to have social justice in this country. He never gave up to fight for the poor people in this country. So when you read George Amado, besides the food, you can also see lots of people <clears throat> view of his life here. So the wrong one is letter C, okay? And if you want to have a travel experience with literature and food, please read Gabriela Cravin Canela and Dona Flores e Os Maridos. Those are the two iconic books about food because we are talking about a cook and a cooking teacher as a principal characters of his books. And they are two very powerful women. George Amado also liked women a lot in his books. Okay, now let's quickly talk about slavery in Brazil. Okay, this is a journey about slavery trade. Okay, most of our brothers and sisters came from Africa, especially from West Africa. And those three ingredients here, Okay, there is one that comes from Africa. It is the middle one, it's the palm oil. Okay, uh, uh, Sylvia probably is going to be the only one that maybe has seen a palm oil in her life. So this is the seed of the palm tree. On the right, we have the coconut that is also very important for our cuisine, comes also from Asia. The coconut oil, uh, the coconut oil, sorry, the palm oil comes from Africa, West Africa. And the peanuts, it's originally from America. And it's also very used in our cuisine. So these three ingredients are very, very important for Bayina cuisine. Okay, then there also is a way of living. Then there's palm oil. Okay, so you see, you can buy then the t-shirts in Bahia. So for you to see how important it is, you know, Silicon Valley in the United States, we also have a valley here, but it's a palm oil valley. It's a dende, valley do dende. They help like little business, little black business here. Just for you to understand how dende, how palm oil is important in the city. And that's our very, very, very important palm oil here, okay? When we talk about palm oil, we have to talk about something that is very, very powerful in Bahia. It's a religion. It's a Brazilian religion called candomblé. I like a lot this sentence of Mateus Aleluia. Mateus Aleluia is a singer. So he says, candomblé, it's a way to have Africa the way that it was 500 years ago. This is very powerful. Okay, so people, when they come to Bahia, they're looking for that ancestrality. They are looking for that powerful. But please look at this picture. At the back of the picture, there is a church. And at the back of the picture, there is like a Catholic saint. And then you have those African ladies in front of this, you know, Catholic saint, those like powerful, like saying, hello, hallelujah, hallelujah. So this is very funny. This is very interesting. And this is what lots of people come to Bahia to see this mix between Catholic traditions and actually African traditions, okay? To understand candomblé, we have to go back 500 years ago, okay? Go back, go back, go back. Let's go back not to Africa that we know today. Let's go back to Africa 500 years ago. Let's go back to the Gulf of Benin, okay? Let's go back what today we call Benin and Nigeria, but let's imagine, okay, close your eyes. You're not in 2020, there is no COVID, Let's go back to Africa 500 years ago. If you live in this area that is red, you would live in Oyo. And the king of Oyo was Shango. Imagine that someone comes, kidnap you, pick you up from Africa and bring you to Bahia and make you become Catholic. You are not going to call, you know, Juliana anymore, Sayuri or Jose or Minji. You're going to have a Catholic name. Carlos, John, Paul. And a Portuguese surname. And a Portuguese surname, okay? Right. What, do you think, what do you think you would do? Do you think you would just mainly accept that or do you think somehow you would keep the traditions? And in Africa, when you offer, you, when you offer presents for the gods, it's food, okay? So food was very important for Candomblé. These are pictures of Georgia, no, sorry, those are pictures of a French photographer. His name is Pierre Rivege. Can you guess which one is in Africa? Which one is in Brazil? Um, do you think the right one is in Africa, the left one in Brazil? What do you think? Minji, you can, you can reply that quickly. Uh, I, I, it's really hard to guess, but I, I think I'm going to guess left one, Brazil, right one, Africa. Exactly. Okay, but when you look at this face, look at their face. Can you see any difference of the feeling? Okay, forget about the clothes. Okay, forget about the background. When, when you see their face, what can you see? I, 
Can you feel the same energy? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Ninji, what makes you say that the one on the left is the Brazilian? I, Mary, I, I really would like to know. Yeah. Well, why do you think the one? Because I thought the same. I don't know these pictures and I thought the same. I, yeah. I said immediately the left one is Brazilian, the right one is African, but why? What I, makes you I think? I think it's that? the house architecture behind on the background. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of crew I, I was trying to get, but I, I don't know if I'm uh, being biased or, yeah. No, that could be. What do you think, Sayuri? Yeah. Sayuri, is that? Uh, what calls my attention the first is the clothes. Also. Because, yeah, the clothing, you know, the way that they dress. They, they both represent Shango. Remember Shango that I was talking to you? This is the representation of Shango. So in Kandon Black, people believe that they worship and they offer the, the food for Shango. They offer the Amala for Shango. And you call Shango to come on earth. So they got in trance and they start dancing just like the Orisha, just like the God. So that's exactly what they are doing. Those two people are in trance, one in Africa. This is a picture of Pierre Rivage in 1960. And the other one in Brazil, it's also a picture of Pierre Rivage in 1960, 1970s. And they both represent Shango. That's why when you look at their face, they look the same. Is this because only Shango. a photo for men, Sayuli? Because I only see men in the photo, is it? No, 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 you can have women too. You can have, I just purpose pick up two men because it's Chango, but there are women here too. In both pictures, they have women. It's a woman here in the back. There is a woman here in the back. No, it's not just a male thing. And then it comes the food that you offer for the gods. Uh, Pierre Hivege also has this picture here. Okay, this one on the left, it is Africa. The one on the right, it is uh, Bahia. And they are selling a street food called Akarajé that we are going to talk a little bit later about that. And akaraja is a street food. What I want to say is that the food that they used to offer inside the candomblé houses starts to go to the streets and become part of our street food tradition, okay? Those pictures here are made by Caribe. Caribe is an artist uh, that I highly recommend you to check. He did lots of paintings of candomblé celebrations in Brazil. Okay, and we are in August. August is a very, very special month for Candomblé. It's a month where we celebrate a uh, Orisha called uh, Omolu. Okay, what you're going to find in Bahia, often when you come here in Bahia in August, you're going to see those picture people asking for donation. They are asking for donation because inside the Candomblé houses, this is a Candomblé house called Ilea Seopo Funja. It is Candomblé house of Caribe. And Caribe in his paintings, he always show food. And if you read about Caribe, I have this book of Caribe that is called um, On the Table with Caribe. And he says a lot how Caribe was involved with this candomblé house. We call Tejero of candomblé. And how he was involved specifically in this celebration of Omolu. This is called the Olu Baje. Celebration. It's very different because those words are all in Yoruba. They're not in Portuguese. I'm going to write some reference for you so you can check later. But what happened is in August, the whole month people collect money. They cook for one day to have a celebration. So in this celebration, what they have in August, on the left, it's Omolu. It's an Orisha. People believe that the spirit, the energy of the Orisha comes. And they serve food. Each one of these little foods that you see on the right, it represents a different orisha. It represents a different energy. And if you go to this house of Kandamba, they're going to give to you to eat. And you're going to be eating like this. This is the food. So each one of these four Kandamba house, it's sacred. And guess what? The popcorn in the right, it's actually what represents Omolu. So they believe that eating this food, it's a blessing food. Okay, so this food is inside the houses of Candomblé. And some of this food went outside the streets or they go into our homes. Okay. Just for you to know, this is Mr. Caribe. He is from Argentina. He was from Argentina. He passed away in 1996. I love this book, Caribe and Verge. 
you can see you have pictures of Caribe and you have paintings of Beijing. Paintings of Caribe and paintings of Beijing. Highly recommend as a reference if you want. This is a very good book and that you can get. Now, let's talk about Mukeka. Uh, actually, Sayuri. I... Uh, huh? Sayuri, I'm sorry, but I have to ask you something. Yes, yes. Can I? The, when you show... Yes. This, is, this, this is something that I always try to ask. No one gives me an answer. They only look at me very weirdly. Also, the family <laughs> of my wife, when I say... When I ask this, they just look at me like, okay, this guy is stupid. But I really want to know. Did you know of anyone? Because, you know, when you show the popcorns, the pipoca, so mm -hmm. all the popcorns, you know, that they're all, uh, I mean, you take a bath yeah. inside that thing, right? So you put yourself inside that. Now I want to know if you, have you ever seen someone eating it? Yes. Like taking it literally and eating while they're taking a bath. Like they were like... <laughs> No, what I mean. Oh no, 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 no! <laughs> you mean, you mean, you mean bayou de pipoca? You mean bayou de pipoca? Yeah. Yes, you are taking a bath, but then the temptation is so strong that you want to just take and eat it. No, no, no! Because what happened is, let let me just explain quickly. Um, he's saying that uh, there is a tradition that that popcorn is going to heal you. So you go to some houses of Candomblé, and basically they pass the popcorn in your body, and we call yeah. it bayou de pipoca. Okay, we yes. call it a popcorn bath. Okay, that's what he say. You cannot exactly. eat that because that popcorn, when it goes to your body, okay, when they do like this in your body, they are taking all the bad things from you. Ah, oh. so if you eat it, you take it back. Actually, yeah. That's right. So when you see they are passing the food on you, they pass and they throw in the floor. They pass and they uh, throw in the floor. Okay. There is one okay. thing. You cannot pass the same popcorn in two, three people. Your uh, popcorn because okay. it's healing you. So right. they believe that they are taking all the bad energy from your body right. and cutting down. Okay, okay, very yeah. interesting. Hey, did actually... it reply to you? Uh, <laughs> I, I, yes. Can I ask a question to Sylvia? Yes. Can I ask a question to Sylvia? Yes. Sylvia, I, I noticed in the chat box you said something about oil, palm oil. By Malaysian, very bad for wildlife. Why is that bad for wildlife? The oil you have in Indonesian Malaysia. So uh, they put uh, they they buy the lamb. Uh, okay, they they buy the lamb of uh, Bangka Island. So most of the people from Bangka Island used to be a farmer. They plant everything, okay? It's like uh, yucca, they plant yucca, they plant uh, pepper and other. And because of that, they, it's like, um, they give a lot of money. So money blind everything. So they cut, they, they sell all the land and becoming palm oil. I see. I understand. It's, bad. it's really bad because of that. Year by year, Bangka Island is heating. It's becoming hot. Oh. Uh, okay. It's, so a mono, it's a monoculture. It's when you take care over of everything and yeah. you just produce one thing. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. And is it the same for Bahia, uh, Sayuli? No. No. It's no. the same story. I no. Palm oil, actually, it is a major thing in Amazon, but not in Bahia. Correct. The production that we have in Bahia, it's basically just for us. We don't export. What, what Siri is talking about in Indonesia, it's like the palm oil that is produced in Indonesia is not actually, for themselves, it's to export. It's for what? The, yeah. the problem in Bahia is actually soya. The soya plantations. Yeah. Because Brazil is the biggest producer in the world, I guess. Uh, yes, so, of soya. Yeah. Yes, of soya. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Thank okay. you. This is delicious. I want to know what is this? Uh, this is mukeka. Okay. So look at the palm oil here. This is mukeka. What's happening is so we have been to Colonial Salvador. Okay. We have learned a little bit of Colonial Salvador. We have, you know, visit a little bit. You know, George Amado's books, George Amado's food. Then we went to Candomblé traditions. We saw what is palm oil, then there, how it's important. Now let's go to the food itself. 
I asked Minji to share with you, to uh, suggest for you to watch Netflix, some other episode. If you didn't, please do. After you see this, uh, if you can do Netflix, do it. Because there is a very specific food that is in Netflix, it's called mukeka. This mukeka we eat in our house. It's different from the food that I show you of the tejeros of candomblé, that, that, that candomblé food, it is an offering that you make for the gods. For example, my house, you are not going to eat that. <laughs> okay, uh, especially because my mom is Catholic. So I can take you to a place where you can eat the comida de tejero, the sacred food, but not in my house. My mom is very Catholic, but she does cook the moqueca, okay? And let's see the ingredients of moqueca, okay? The principal ingredients of moqueca are here, okay? Uh, the protein, you can use fish, you can use shrimp. If you're a vegetarian, you can do a veggie moqueca, you can do a vegan moqueca, you can eat meat, but the principal are here. So you have cilantro, you have the veggies, Okay, tomato, onion, garlic, you can use this pepper, okay? And you have the palm oil, but it's missing one. It's missing one ingredient that is very important. Which one is this? Letter A, olive oil, B, tapioca, C, coconut milk, D, chili, or you can go private and ask my mom in the chat, okay? <laughs> Which one do you want? A, B, C, D, or E? Mindy <laughs> says... Let's ask your mom, but I think it's me too. <laughs> so there is a very important ingredient that is missing. What do you think? I, I will give you a tip. Here okay? it says C. Uh, C? Uh, C? C. C. So Judy, we got a couple of Bs, but most of it is C. We get a D. C? Yeah. I'll give you a tip. Our cuisine is very simple. I'm very happy that uh, Sylvia is here because uh, every time that I see our food, I think it's very close, you know. Indonesia, Thailand food, because we do use lots of cilantro and coconut milk. It's coconut milk, what is missing. Okay, so what I'm going to show you now, uh, I hope the video works. I really hope the video works. Um, uh, I have problems with videos sometimes, but just let me know if you can see or not. I'm going to show you Susanna. Susanna is the principal um, um, food in the street food of Netflix. But in Netflix, it's a very, you know, big, high production of, you know, American Netflix. But I'm going to show you a video that a friend of mine made with Dona Susana, okay? And if you come to Bahia, you can go to the top restaurant to have moqueca. But I highly, highly recommend you that you breathe and try to go to authentic place. If my mom is very happy and if you're very nice and kind, I can might invite you to come and have the best moqueca in the city. That is Mama's moqueca. Or you can go to a very simple neighborhood and have a moqueca like she's doing here. Let's see. She's talking about the food, the fish, how she cooks and she buys the fish. So you have the fish. So that's how you do it. You put the fish or the shrimp first. And then you put, you know, uh, tomato, onion. So we call it to make a bed, faz uma cama. Okay, and then you put the cilantro. Can you see you put the pepper? In my house, we cut differently. In each house, they cut different. Then you put the cilantro. Okay, lots of cilantro. <laughs> if you don't like cilantro, you have a problem coming here. I don't. Oh, I Juliano, don't. you're in I trouble. <laughs> then you put, look, coconut milk, lots of coconut milk, and then you cook. When the moqueque is almost ready, it goes very fast. When the moqueque is almost ready, you put the palm oil and has that flavor. Okay, everyone is okay? Hungry, actually. We were pretty hungry, hungry but that's all right. <laughs> now let's talk about beach. Okay, if you come to Bahia, I have to take you to the beach, right? First, I took you to George Amado house. Then we went to have a moqueca in Dona Susana's place. Now let's go to the beach, okay? In the beach, we had what is called the bahacas. What do you think are the bahacas? Are the bahacas the kioscos where the Bayano get very healthy food, like acai, after, you know, running and jogging on the beach? Are the bahaca places where you have the best tapioca in the city? 
are the Bahaka beach options to eat? When I, when I say eat in the beach in Bahia, I mean really eat like a meal in the beach? Or is it a camping notion option for the beach when there is a full moon and a very romantic and you are with a boyfriend or a girlfriend from Brazil or maybe you find your love of your life in Brazil and you just go to see the full moon there? What do you think are the bahacas, A, B, C, or D? Oh, Juliana, that's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got C, Sajuri. We got one A. Yes. Menji says one A. It's A. We got B, Yvonne. So we can yes. say C. C. Most of it is the correct. Uh, Okay. Is correct. All right, this, good. Yes, this is a beach. It's a um, city beach. It's called um, Porto da Barra. Look how full of people it is. This is not COVID time. COVID time is very empty. But the barracas, you can have two kinds of barraca. You can have very trendy barracas. Okay, like this. Look like this. You know, like a maca. You know, like you can have waiters coming to you. You know. You can have people like serving you, or you can have very popular bahakas like this. And there is something very unique about the food in Bahia. Okay, there you go. So look at the acarajé. The acarajé, remember the lady that I show you cooking in the middle of the street? The street food. So you can have this here. This is made with black eyed peas. Okay, so this is a black eyed pea food. It's fried in palm oil. On the right, it's a very, very special cheese called queijo coalho. They sell this on the beach. So those are things that you can eat on the beach. Silvia, this is for you. Yucca. <laughs> <laughs> you can have easily yucca. We also have yucca in the morning, okay? But not fried yucca. We have cooked yucca with a butter. It's very, very good. Or Imagine swimming. Meal. Imagine swimming after all this. <laughs> yeah. And then you can have a whole meal on the beach. Can you see on the right? This is a moqueca. You can eat a moqueca in the beach. Okay. Or my favorite one on the left, it's called the lambreta. Or on the right, you have a salted meat. Okay. Dried salted meat with beans, with this all you can have on the beach. But there is something very unique about the beach in Bahia. Okay. Uh, don't. If you go to very simple beaches, you can have some very famous and uh, funny people selling those things. And I'm going to show you now a guy that is trying to sell something on the beach that you're going to think is very funny. Mama, turn on the oven. Mama, legal forno. Mama is going to help me. Oh, you got mama's help. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this salesman. He's trying to sell you the cheese. <laughs> Very energetic. Guys, he's basically trying to sell the cheese for you. <laughs> this is all to try to sell that. Okay, so the, the, the sailors, the guys that sell things on the beach are very, very funny. Okay, now I'm going to finish. I'm going to show you how to do a very, very famous uh, um, breakfast. Liliana is going to show you some breakfast things too. I'm going to show you how to do the tapioca. Tapioca is made with yuca. So this is what Silvia said that was very original from her island in Indonesia. Now she doesn't have any more. I'm going to leave you a little bit with um, Jose. Jose is going to uh, help you with some backgrounds about Bahia. He's going to show you a little movie. Why I'm in the kitchen trying to put uh, Mama to actually uh, do the food with you. So not paying attention on me right now. We are going to pay attention on my mom, okay? So pin up my mom. She's going to be the one that is going to be presenting. I don't know if I can do this correctly, but I'm just yeah, going sure. to. Yeah, so I'm going to. Well, go so Yuri will be, will be out just for a couple of seconds. I'll be just presenting uh, on, on a video um, Jose, do you want me to stop sharing? It's better, right? Yeah, stop sharing because then I cannot share. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Thank you so much. So I'll be presenting a, a, a very short video. So it will take a minute of um, a Bahia. Yes. There.
Hello, let's see if it works. Hello. I do. Can you see? Let me see if you can see. Let me let me stop. Let me stop the background just a second. Hello, let me know. Can you see it? So this is Mama. She doesn't want to show, but this is Mama. <laughs> Hi. So oh, here's Mama. Yeah. 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 You have to buy. You have to buy the flower of tapioca. And then what the secret is, you have to make it very thin, like this. Mm -hmm. And then Mama is going to throw a cook. Go, Mama, to cook. So we are going to do a very simple one with tomato and cheese. Go, Mama, there. Here, yeah, Mommy. Mommy. Don't be like you. Look, you see? You just got the tapioca. So you make it very hard, like a pancake. Okay, and like very, very quickly, you can just um, turn. Mama, Vira, you see? You just do like this, and it becomes like a, how can I say, like a cup. And at the end, okay. at the end, you just put the topping that you want, uh -huh. and at the end, you're going to have something like this. What do you put inside? Whatever you want. Uh, I am suggesting to put some cheese and some, um, um, Tomato, that's what mama is going to do. She's going to put some cheese and tomato, uh -huh. but you can put whatever you want. Oh, so it's savory, it's not sweet. So uh, we do, you we can do put it sweet though. if you want. You can put right. it sweet if you want. All right. Okay, and now I'm going to leave you guys with, I'm going to leave you guys with Guiliano, because he's going to show some food of uh, Sao Paulo for you. <laughs> can I ask one question? Okay. Is it is tapioca flour, like salt or anything, or is it just tapioca flour? It's and just tapioca, tapioca flour. And no water? No, just the tapioca flour. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very <laughs> nice. Thank you. Thank you, so you need I'll 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 now, we will We will be answering questions be, uh, after Juliana's presentation. Yes. Okay, so it will be pretty quick. Um, now we're traveling south, right, Juliano? From yes, Salvador, correct. we're traveling south, almost two kilometers south from, from Salvador. And we almost 2,000. Almost 2,000 kilometers, yes. So we're going to have <laughs> some snacks, right? I'm having mine here right now. So. Oh, very good. So guys, Please. <laughs> anyone, everybody get your snacks if you want, because I don't like to eat alone. So uh, my <laughs> first, before starting, I just want to say hello to Max. Max is a friend of us from Rio. And she's connecting you for the second uh, time. And hi, it is, uh, Max. Uh, sometimes, nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you, Max. Uh, sometimes we would like you to introduce yourself and uh, eventually also to have something to share with us, okay? One day of this, if you like. Now, uh, I'm going to be quick, okay? Because uh, I, I, I like to eat very quickly. And actually, <laughs> the thing that I got, I got these things that I'm going to show to you just uh, uh, one hour ago, just like 30 minutes before then the session, okay? So... The idea was to show to you uh, on a side something that is very typical, that is very traditional, that is very Brazilian. And this is actually what Sayuri very, very well and very nicely did. And in the other side, to show to you how foods in this country can be very diverse. So Sao Paulo, it is a mix of people from everywhere. We got a lot of people from Bahia. Actually, we say that Sao Paulo is the biggest city of the Northeast, not in the Northeast. And then we got people from many other places, okay? So the idea was today to walk up just a bit before because of you and go to check some of the snacks and the food that we can have for breakfast every morning. And 
when you go for uh, for this, when you go on this <laughs> bars to get your breakfast, it is actually like a journey, like you're traveling the world. So now, with the support of technology, I'm gonna show you. <laughs> Sorry. My <laughs> Sorry. second camera. So guys, the second camera, I don't know if you can see it. Oh, we see it. Is that the one with food? Juliano? Is that one Marco. with food? I ask you to go to check myself in yes. the other camera. You, you can pin on that if you like. Yeah, let's ping it. Sure. Uh, I'm going to click uh, on the top right. And yeah. The dot, 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 three dots, and pin video exactly. to have a good view of your food. Exactly. And I am, there is also an umbrella behind and a door. Don't, uh, don't look at that. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need umbrellas. So, if you can see all this, this is actually what I was able to collect today in the morning, half an hour before. And I'm going to show you in just a few minutes what is this about. So, these are my hands, right? <laughs> 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 so uh, let's start from let's start from this well no let's start from this actually can you see this can you yes what is this is okay, it you so this... is it you your cup something no no not at all not at all so let's open it so you can see actually what this is about look how it is inside oh okay so there is a meat inside oh. Okay, this is all meat inside, there is parsley, and this is all deep fried. This is called kibi, and kibi comes from Syria. Okay, so Sao Paulo is the house of the biggest Syrian population outside Syria. So we got a lot of Syrian food here. Okay, so this is a Syrian thing. Now, let's go on the journey to something else. Look at this. Can you see this? It looks like a... A potato. It actually looks like a tart, something like a tart. Correct. This is something that we call empada. Let's open it. And so you can see how it is inside. Let me show it to you better. So look at this, right? So there is an olive in the middle and then it's all fit with palm tree. Actually, this is the fruit of the palm tree. It's called empada di palmito. So basically, guys, this comes from the Middle Age. It's very old thing, but we didn't have Middle Age in Brazil. This is a Portuguese thing. So arrived with Portuguese here, and it's a pie. It is a pie that in Portugal is fit with chicken. But here in Brazil, we do this with chicken too. But as we are in a tropical country, we like to fit it with palmito, with palm trees. So our typical Brazilian empada, it changes in the ingredients, let's say. And so this is basically with palm tree. Uh, another thing that I want to show to you is this one. You know that after I have, to, I have actually to eat all of this because I'm opening all of this. So look at this. This, it's very, this is very yummy. Okay. It doesn't really look traditional, I would say, but this, let me open it. I don't know if you can see it, how it is inside. So, let me show you how this is it. So this is meat again, uh -huh. okay. And this is called esfija. Esfija is a Lebanese word. So this oh. comes from Lebanon. As I told you before, Syria uh, hosts the biggest Syrian community outside Syria and Lebanon host the biggest Lebanon community in the world. Imagine that in Brazil, we have 10 million Lebanese living, while in Lebanon, there are just about 5 million, a bit less than 5 million. Okay, so the Lebanese population of Brazil, of Sao Paulo actually, or we could say Brazil in general, is twice the Lebanese population of Lebanon. Okay, now, something else that I want to show you. As you know, migration is not just, uh, let's say, foreign migration. We have also a lot of domestic migration. So this thing, I don't know if you can see it, is what we call pão de queijo. This comes from the state of Minas Gerais. Minas Gerais in English means general mines. Portuguese were there and they were extracting all the gold and they still extract stuff there actually, not just Portuguese. But they, a lot of people go there to get the natural resources. But this is made with cheese. It's made with polvillo, which is a uh, a flavor that comes from, uh, it's similar to tapioca, the same that you saw in tapioca. So basically it's a gum. And then this is cheese, okay? So when you open it, 
This is actually very chewing. It's cheese. And this is very good, actually. It, so, so it was also quite expensive, I have to say. <laughs> now, everybody hungry. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so this is going to be, because now it's about 11, this is going to be my uh, half breakfast, half lunch, I would say, because there's a lot of stuff. Now, she's the queen, the queen of Sao Paulo, guys. So this is something that we eat every time. I don't know if you ever saw uh, an Italian arancini that is made with rice and has meat inside. This looked like an Italian arancini. We don't really know if this was giving the idea to this. We call this coscigna, which means a uh, small leg. It's the leg of the chicken. So when you open it, guess what you find inside? Chicken. chicken. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a dough that is all filled with chicken and is all deep fried. This is the most common snack Street snack that you have here in Sao Paulo. We don't really know if this was made in Sao Paulo. We don't really know if there is any relation with Italian migration, but we know that this is very, very common here and uh, that actually this looks very similar to an arancini. So that might be, that, might, that should be some connection. Okay. So, guys, this is something that you can find walking uh, 30 minutes around my house and collecting from different places and different bars, let's say for a breakfast. So different countries. We got Syria, we got Lebanon, we got Portugal, we got Brazil, and probably Italy, very probably Italy. Okay, so this was my journey. This is what I wanted to present to you. Okay. Giuliano. Hey. Eat it. Eat I'm gonna it. eat it, of course, of course I'm gonna eat it. We eat it later, for bring sure. some food, we eat together. And then answer the questions why you're eating it. I have my you food. Eat it? <laughs> we bought your food, Minji. What I do you have there food. to share with us? Yeah, uh, I wonder if Sumili is doing that because actually this is Japanese food. Uh, so we went to Japan for skiing, Hokkaido. And mm -hmm. Hokkaido is very famous for dairy product. So I'm opening, this is actually from the local agriculture school in Japan, Hokkaido. And mm -hmm. that's the small biscuits. A biscuit? A biscuit. Oh, cool. Biscuits. Yes. Very nice. And buy from Japan and it's very, very yummy. That's mine. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I got mine as well. So I can that? share it. What is this? This is a this is bread. Actually the whole thing. <laughs> this, this is bread. You see it, it has a little like shape on it. It's rounded. We call it rosquitas. In we have rosquinha. We have rosquinha. We got rosquinha, and we eat this with a lot of cheese, and e I mean a lot of butter, and even we put white cheese on the top, and mm. eat it at any time. Oh my! Delicious. Oh, we're hungry, right? So, Rupak, you know, I don't know if anyone else would like to share. Rupak, you got something to share? I'm, I'm eating a samosa now. I love samosa. it. Oh, I love it. Yes. <laughs> I like the board that you put behind you to say, I'm eating samosa. That's <laughs> <laughs> so funny. <laughs> You're testing our English language. Okay. Yeah, so fun. Mm. <laughs> Anyone else? Anyone else? Are you seeing this net? Are you seeing this net? Anyone else would like to share? <laughs> I would love to I... share. I have Brilliant. nothing to share. Sorry, uh, don't live in a, a country. Oh, Sylvia sharing. Culture. What is this, Sylvia? Sylvia? Sylvia, what's that? Oh, Sylvia. But see, yeah, I type it on the chat. You can you can search it on Google. Mm hmm. Mm. But, so yeah. Yeah. this is the original. So it's round. It. Okay. Uh, wait, I I will show you guys. So it's like layers. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm. A mung bean paste inside. Oh, oh I like right. it. Mm. It's sweet or savory? It's sweet, right? It's yeah, it's it's sweet, but I, I create this one is salt and sweet. What? Oh, oh in China they eat this too. It's right. like mung bean. Mm. I right. a shallow. Jenny, you I should do one for the breakfast in Wuhan. 
because th- you have to have breakfast in Wuhan. Uh, today I will show you something I can get easily. It's called maple syrup. That's what I made last winter. Uh, it's very, very boring. Nobody yeah. interested in it. it. <laughs> yeah, we made it. We got the trees, and it's like uh, it's like you drink a hole, and the water come down, and you boil mm. it. It becomes syrup. So it's like thirty five to one. The ratio is like that. Amazing. So we made a lot of it last winter because during the lockdown we have nothing to do. <laughs> you know, you become a farmer after all. We all need food. So I really like today's topic. You guys. Wonderful. Yeah. Sumili has something too. I saw Sumili wants to show something. You need to unmute yourself. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so you can hear me actually. So this is I think this is the popular Japanese stock, dried sardine, dried fish. Oh, oh. Dried sardine. Yeah. you know, we have a lot of calcium. And now actually so my son is 13 years old and teenager, so he's how can I say, adolescence, adolescence always, mom, shut up, or don't call me often, or I really, you know, sometimes very stressful, so I need calcium. So this uh-huh. is very... <laughs> good idea, very good idea. Wonderful. <laughs> 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 very nice. Yes. So thank you. I, I quickly look at the chat, I think I reply to everyone, but I don't know if anyone has a, like a last question. And uh, after all, you I would reply. like to thank very much yeah. to Minji, Jose, and Juliano for helping me organize. This is my first quiz, so I hope you like oh, it. No. Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Very good. And please, if you have any question, and also, of course, help Mama. You know, Mama helped me a lot. Mama. Thank you, Mama. Oh, I miss my Mama. I don't know if we have so, so any other questions that I should reply. Yes, but I think uh, I actually, I don't know if you, uh, pretty quick questions. I know you can answer it pretty quick. Rupert's asked question was, why the Karambe ladies were we- wearing white and red, their dress? The white and red, the red might be a coincidence. White is always wear like, it's a very, very important color for candomba, for example. You might know this, that every Friday I'm wearing white. White is the color of Oshala. It is, would be like the supreme Orisha, you know, the, the father of ours. So usually in Bahia, in Fridays, we wear white. I don't practice candomba, but I respect a lot. And I'm just calling good energy. So you are going to always see white in the clothing. Always. Wonderful. And also remember, in the past, it was very difficult to have colorful color, colors on the clothes. You know, white would be, white would be the predominant. Oh. Remember, candomblé has lots to do with traditions. So they keep as much tradition as possible in the past. Right. Any oh, there's question? another question. Elena was asking if the red on the oil palm, if it's because it's spicy or because it's a natural color. No, it's a natural color. It's, it's the natural color of the, the palm oil. All right, cool. That's basically the questions I have. So, well, well once again, Sayuri and Juliano, thank you so much for this wonderful adventure that we Oh, let me take a picture. Japan. Can I take a picture? Please. Sure. Yes, of okay. course. Everybody wave to them. Everybody wow. wave to them. Yeah, Yay. just a second. <laughs> Maya, just a second. Maya, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Please remember. (laughs) Please remember that uh, next week we are having another adventure, another journey. In this case, Praven will be uh, taking us to uh, the Taj Mahal. Uh, And uh, remember that we're doing live on Tuesday. So please also follow us on Tuesday for the live event. And then for sure, we'll see you next Friday. Okay, so thank you so much and see you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Bye.